Today, I wanna to share with you how we have done our RV skirting, just how inexpensive and simple it really is and how uh, effective. It's been really consistent under there for temperature, even with us dropping down to negative five degrees Fahrenheit. It really didn't take us long to be able to put this on, but I do have something that I would change in the future that would make it even less expensive and make the install go even that much faster. Even though this only took me an afternoon to do, we can even speed that process up even more. Now let's get right into it. I wanna show you exactly what we use and how we installed it. And then I'll show you what we would have done in the future so that way it makes it even that much more usable. So we got this gray foam, it's three quarters inch from Lowe's. And so we did the gray, number one, I really don't care how RVs look with skirting on it, it's not my favorite. And this gray was a little bit better than some of the other options that I liked for. RRV. Little vain, but it makes a little difference to me. So I also used gray duct tape for the seams on the outside, so that way it just wasn't quite as noticeable. But anywhere that I connected tape to the RV, I try to be really mindful about it. Number one, I use this tape that is supposed to leave less residue. And when I put the tape on the RV, I tried really hard to have it be underneath or kind of on the back side of things. So that way, when I do take this off, that's cold. That's real cold. That way when I do take this off, I'm not having to clean up as much residue as I would if I just taped it to the side of the RV. This stuff was really easy to be able to work with. You can score it and then you can snap it, kind of just like drywall. And this does have like a plastic film on it. So then you want to take a razor blade and cut that other side. So that way you're not kind of peeling that plastic off and leaving, leaving that all connected onto the styrofoam. So really simple, you measure the piece that you need and then you just tape it to the underside of the RV. The key is to make it all one space. So you don't have big holes or anything like that where the air can get in and out. You want it to be a, a confined space underneath there. So obviously you want all the seams and joints and corners taped up so that there's no holes. And for the areas that I need access, I put a piece of tape at the top and then I put a little piece of tape at the bottom where it's a little pull tab. So now I can open it up. This is the dump for our kitchen gray water. And so then I can just close that right back up and it, it seals up. Now there's really not much to it. You just need to get the material and take the time to put it on. Take the time because you want it to look halfway decent by the time you get to the end. Now it would have been nice to do underneath the portion of the fifth wheel, but for us, this worked fantastic. We use less propane. It was easier to heat the inside of the RV and we haven't had any issues with freezing pipes or any of our tanks or anything like that. This has done an amazing job. Now, what I wish I would have done is I wish I would have ordered a material. Everybody loves being able to use Reflectex and I'm glad I didn't use just plain Reflectex to go around it, but they do have a double bubble. Now, I, I know that sounds like a chewing gum, but they have a double bubble Reflectex kind of a material. And so while you can see Reflectex is really easy to bend, it may not be the most rigid thing to put on the outside, the double bubble, when you double it up and it comes that way, so it's all one unit, it becomes a, a lot more rigid and it doesn't bend as easily. So I think that would work really well because you could put that on the back underside like we did this foam, but then you could also bend this on the ground. So you get some staples and then you can staple it to the ground. If you're on concrete, you could use bricks or something on the inside to keep it from blowing in. You would still wanna use tape to hit all the seams and joints, but I think because you can fold that in, you can reuse it. So if you go to a different spot and you have a little bit different in height, it doesn't matter because you have a little bit more material that was bent down underneath there and you can reuse it. And I think it would be that much quicker and easier to install, not having to measure every area and trying to get that slope throughout it. It would just be, like I said, that much easier to be able to install. And having everything unclosed, while this may not have as much insulation as the foam board that we use, I think it would be almost as effective and just a little bit easier to work with. So if I was using this, I would use the foil tape on the backside of it for those seams. And the nice thing about that double bubble, I'll leave a link down in the description, is it has a white face. So you're not gonna have the reflection reflective Reflectex on the outside. You can have it just be a, a solid white on the outside. Then you could use that white tape. That white tape sticks really well to the RV if you just give it a quick clean and it would stick really well to that type of material. It, it would work really well. So I'm gonna put links down in the description to the tape, the Reflectex and to everything that we talked about in this video. I don't know that you can get that foam by ordering it, but you can just run to Lowe's and grab some of the foam if that's the direction you were heading. The skirting makes an amazing difference. Like I said, we got down to negative five single digits at multiple nights in a row, not getting above freezing during the day. 
and this made all the difference in the world. If you do that double bubble reflectix, you can be under $200, and I think we were around 220 bucks for what we did on ours currently. So I hope this helps you out. It is really cold out. We have some other videos about cold weather in your RV. Check those out if you want more information and accessories to use in your RV for the cold or additional heaters. Lots of great information there, but it's cold and I'm getting out of here. So as always, if we don't see you on the road, hopefully we will see you next video. Take care. What are you still doing out here? It's cold. Go skirt your RV, get warmer, something.